We have arrived at the most important theorem in all of calculus, the fundamental theorem of calculus, which states that if we have a function f that is continuous on the closed interval a, b, then its signed area function, capital A of x, that we define to be the definite integral from little a to x of f of t dt, is a function of x that is continuous on the closed interval a, b, differentiable on open a, b, and its derivative capital A prime of x is our original function f of x. So in this sense, differentiation undoes integration. The intuition behind the first part of the fundamental theorem is quite nice. It says that if we take the graph of the function f between two points, so here I'm using the variable t on purpose, the two points are a that we keep fixed and x that we let vary. Now this signed area we call capital A of x, it's a function of x. As we change the right end point of this interval, this value also changes. So let's change it by a bit, take it to x plus h, then this area indeed changes. It becomes instead of a of x, a of x plus h which is approximately the old area plus the bit that we added here, which is approximately the area of that rectangle of base h and height f of x. So what we add to this is the area of that rectangle, which is h times f of x. This is approximately true. So we can rearrange this, subtract a of x from both sides and divide then by h to get the difference quotient of a at x be approximately f of x. When we take the limit as h goes to 0, we get on the left hand side a prime of x. And what the fundamental theorem of calculus says, the par part 1, is that this approximation in the limit becomes an exact equality. A prime of x becomes equal to f of x. Now the fundamental theorem of calculus also has a second part which says we can evaluate the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx as the difference of endpoint values with any antiderivative of little f. So capital F here is an antiderivative of little f and that means that capital F prime of x is uh, little f of x and the, anti and the definite integral between a and b can be evaluated as capital F of b minus capital F of a. Now let's see why that's true. Well, according to the first part, we already know that the signed area function is an antiderivative of little f because a prime of x is little f of x. So that combined with the fact that um, antiderivatives can only differ by a constant means that capital F of x must be a of x plus some constant c. Okay, um, so then the right hand side, this difference of endpoint values for capital F must be simply the difference of endpoint values for a of x plus c. The plus c cancels in this difference and we are left with a of b minus capital A of little a but capital A of little a is the definite integral from a to a, and that is zero, so we are only left with the first term, that is the definite integral from a to b of f of t dt, but then that symbol of t could be replaced by x, to, and then we obtain the statement of the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, let's look at an example. Let's consider the function f of x equals x over the closed interval between 0 and 1. Now, the signed area function for this function from 0 to x will be the area under the graph of the function, and that area is just the area of a triangle with base x and height x, so that area is x squared over 2, and its derivative is just x, which is indeed the original function. As for the definite integrals, so the, any antiderivative of x is just x squared over 2 plus a constant c, the constant of integration. And if we take the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x dx, that means to evaluate the 
the antiderivative at the endpoint values and at the, the endpoints and take the difference. So x squared over uh, 2 plus c evaluated at 1 gives us 1 squared over 2 plus c at 0, 0 squared over 2 plus c. The difference uh, in the difference the c cancels and we are left with 1 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2 that is just 1 half as we know from before. Okay, let's solve some problems using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate this definite integral, pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have inputted 2 for the value of this definite integral. We can evaluate it using the second part of the fundamental theorem. So here we have this polynomial 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 that we need to uh, integrate. It, one antiderivative would be x cubed plus 2x squared minus x. Evaluating this at the endpoints, x equals 1 and x equals 0, we get the difference of endpoints values to be uh, 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared minus 1 minus the value at 0, which will be 0. So let me just write it. So we get um, 1 plus 2 minus 1, that is 2. Let's look at the next question. Use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate this definite integral. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have inputted 1 for the value of this definite integral. We can evaluate it again using the second part of the fundamental theorem. So we, all we need is an antiderivative of the sine of x, and that could be negative cosine of x, which when evaluated at the endpoints, x equals pi over 2 and x equals 0, then taken the difference of the endpoint values, we get minus the cosine of pi over 2 minus the negative of cosine of 0. Well, the cosine at pi over 2 becomes 0, and from this we need to subtract the negative of cosine of 0, that is 1. So 0 minus negative 1 is just plus 1. So the value of this definite integral is plus 1, and it, what, what it expresses, if we think of it in terms of areas, is that the area under the graph of the sine function from 0 to pi over 2 is this area is just 1. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.